when I say tiger, what's the image that comes to your mind? Probably a one that looks a lot like this. The apex predator, the largest of the cat species, that is literally built for the kill with its strong, powerful legs and that ambush predator who can take down that prey with ease. You probably think of that orange sleek coat with those dark stripes that allow it to camouflage and sleek right into its background. When I think tiger, however, my image is very different. What I'm going to show you today is the image of tigers that I have. When I think tiger, I think of Aria. Aria, who lived for the first 10 years of her life in the backyard of a family in South Carolina. Aria, who was days from death when we went down to rescue her. The problem was Aria was getting sick and nobody, they couldn't find a vet who would work with her. When we got down there and got a good look at her, we knew that she was days from death. We brought her back to our facility and uh, our vet was able to do a physical and blood work and found out that she has EPI or exocrine pancreatic insufficiency. So your pancreas does two things, produces the insulin needed to regulate your blood sugar, and it, but it also produces enzymes needed to digest your food. So the one, uh, the part of her pancreas needed to uh, help with her blood sugar, totally fine. The other part, not so much. Her pancreas wasn't producing those enzymes. So even though she was eating, this family wasn't trying to starve her, but she was starving to death. Once we were able to get on, her on supplements and a proper diet, Aria began to rebound. She started to grow her fur back. Her once frizzy coat became the sleek fur that we know of of tigers. She was putting on and doubling her weight. And once we were able to really get her some TLC and that proper diet, Aria made a recovery. Unfortunately, EPI is something that she had to live with for the rest of her life. But she was in a facility that could care for her that understood her needs, that were able to give her room to roam and to be a tiger. So uh, tigers have this way of greeting people. Uh, it, they actually didn't develop for people, right? They developed talk to other tigers. Um, <laughs> just to be selfish, I think it's for us. Uh, but they chuffle. Um, and Arya was the best chuffler that we ever had. Um, have you guys ever heard a tiger chuffle? Yeah, some of, maybe. Um, so I'm gonna do my best impression, I'm sorry. <laughs> so when they come, when Aria would come down and you say, hello Aria, how are you? And she'd go, <laughs> And she would just do it over and over and over. Um, and, and when we first got to her, she would do it a little bit, but now we knew, okay, she's gonna be okay. When I think of tigers, though, I think of Raja and Kayla. Raja and Kayla, who were literally found on the side of the road outside of Charlotte when they were six months old. Think about that for a second. <laughs> side of the road outside of Charlotte. I think about how at six months old, they should have been with their mother. In the wild, tigers live with their mothers for two years. And they are taught how to hunt and fend for themselves. And then mama says, okay, go on. These guys were six months old, just starting to be able to eat meat. Where was their mother? I think about how if they had been a year and six months, there would have been no questions asked, taken to the side of the road, and literally killed. I think instead of 60 pounds, had they been 260 pounds, again, no questions asked, they would have been killed. What would have happened had there not been a facility who could have taken them in? But here they are today. So Raja's in the bottom right-hand corner. He weighs over 400 pounds. And then Kayla's in the top left-hand corner. She is close to, if not, uh, 400 pounds as well. When I think about white tigers or hear white tigers, I think of saber. And I think of the hundreds of tigers that are bred each year to find and have that one perfect show quality tiger. And I think of the hundreds of others that are born blind or deaf or with epilepsy or scoliosis because they are continuing to inbreed this mutation. And those tigers that aren't that show quality tiger, they're killed or they're sold or they become somebody's pet in their backyard. I think about Saber who, who was lucky enough to not have that fate. However, if you notice, his teeth are filed down. He was handled by humans, and some people think the only way to make them safe is to file their teeth down. 
This causes long-term problems. You eventually will have to have root canals so that those teeth don't become infected. It got all the way down to the pulp. As if that wasn't enough, saber is also declawed. When you declaw a cat, you're not only just changing the way they walk, you're literally taking off the tips of their toes. Cats are, are these amazing predators who can silently slink up to their prey because they walk on the tips of their toes. But when you remove that tip, you're causing them to walk back on their heels and their ankles, which displaces in tigers up to four or 600 pounds. So unfortunately, what I see for his future is extensive dental work and eventually arthritis. When I think of tigers in the wild, I think of Zelushka. I think of the unimaginable odds that these guys face every day against starvation, habitat loss, and poaching. The good news is Zelushka was given a second chance. IFA, or the International Fund for Animal Welfare, was able to step in when they got a call about a four-month-old tiger who was starving and orphaned. Likely, her mother was killed due to poaching. With the help of IFA, and a specially designed enclosure for her that was large enough for her to learn to hunt and fend for herself and to keep her away from humans. Zelushka became the first Amor tiger to be rehabilitated and released to eventually have her own litter of cubs. These are the fa names and the faces of the tigers that we do know. Unfortunately, there are still thousands others that we don't know, but we know that they're out there. Hundreds being bred for tourists to take pictures with, literally taken from their mothers within hours of their birth, because mama's only making money if she's making babies. Still others who are living in complete squalor, never having touched grass, always living on concrete and literally surrounded by trash. And still hundreds more who are jumping through flaming hoops for our entertainment. Just over 100 years ago, there were 100,000 wild tigers, but unfortunately, they are facing extinction. Oh, just over 100 years ago, there were nine subspecies. However, today, there are just 3,800 tigers left of five subspecies. This is a 96% decrease of the wild population of tigers in just over 100 years. These guys, the wild ones, are killed for parts. They are poached for every part of their body. In some cultures, it's believed that every single part of them can be used to cure diseases, impotency, blindness, epilepsy. Even the ground they die on is worth something. A live tiger may fetch between five and six thousand dollars. A dead one, fifty to sixty thousand dollars. In some cultures, a pound of tiger bone will fetch between $75 and $115. I don't know if you guys know, their parts don't actually cure those things. The human population growing, even those who aren't poached for their parts are running out of space. Their land is being fragmented and clear cut on a daily basis. Every single hour, 300 football fields worth of land is cut down and burned to grow palm oil. Palm oil, unfortunately, is a really cheap and easy product to grow and is unfortunately in 50% of consumable goods. Leaving tigers with only 7% of their historical ranges. However, don't worry guys, there's good news. There is. This is pic these are pictures that surfaced just a couple weeks ago of an Indo-Chinese tiger mother and her two cubs over a kill. The Indo-Chinese tiger only has about 300 tigers left. So every single birth is one of importance and to see these cubs at a couple months old, probably six months old at this point, is really exciting. And here in the United States and across the world, we're getting the idea that these guys aren't meant for the entertainment industry. Circuses are closing down. The movie and the TV industry is realizing that 
there are so many things we can do with computers that doesn't affect a live animal. One example being the Jungle Book. The only live living creature in that, uh, in that movie was the boy. <laughs> I went and saw it and there were times I was going, really? They did a really good job. And then in The Walking Dead, I know some pe people are probably Walking Dead fa uh, fans, um, one, one of the, uh, the actors said, I was really excited that they weren't bringing a live tiger because I was going to have to quit. <laughs> and can you imagine being called for your job and you get to be the man in the blue suit acting like a tiger? <laughs> I, think that's, I think that's really cool. People are changing their minds about how these guys should be treated. They're standing up and holding these companies responsible. But you, we need help, and you guys can help. And the way you can help are making simple changes in your life. I ask that you not go to roadside zoos that are only there to exploit these animals. I ask that you avoid entertainment industries that are making money off of wild animals who aren't meant to do tricks. So one little thing here, lions and tigers don't actually meet in the wild, so this is a little terrifying for me. And I ask that you not take pictures with these cubs. Remember, they're supposed to be with their mothers for up to two years. But unfortunately, in malls all over the country, these cubs are being handled by as many paying hands as possible in a single day. I also ask that you limit your use of palm oil. It, again, unfortunately, is in over 50% of consumable goods. But there's almost always an alternative. It just takes a few extra minutes to find it. And then support organizations that are helping these guys in the wild and in captivity live the life that they deserve. To quote Jane Goodall, you cannot get through a single day without having an impact on the world around you. What you do makes a difference, and you have to decide what kind of difference you want to make. I've shown you lots of pictures today, pictures of a tiger who is dying, pictures of cubs on the side of the road, a picture of an, a white tiger who is forever scarred. Tigers are a symbol of strength, power, and resilience. However, their fate is grim currently. But with your help, we can change that. These stories have impacted my life and the choices that I make on a daily basis. I ask if they have moved you, what choices will you make to forever change the lives of tigers in captivity and in the wild? Thank you.